Hi everyone, welcome back and happy 1st of March. Hope everyone is doing really well. I've recently gotten back from a two week holiday. I got back two days ago. So apologies that I haven't replied to any comments on my videos. The Wi-Fi situation on the cruise on the boat was really, really awful. I basically only had access to WhatsApp messages and just text messages. I couldn't download any pictures or any videos. So I wasn't able to access YouTube and respond to any comments. So that is on my to-do list. I will respond. So thank you very much for those that have commented and also thank you for watching my videos that I put up in the meantime. But I'm back and this video is going to be my February empties video. So I'm going to talk about all the makeup, beauty, skincare, hair care products that I finished off in the month of February, my thoughts on them and whether I would repurchase any of them or not. So in total I finished off nine products which is pretty good going, especially for half of the month I obviously went on holiday and I only took with me a limited amount of products. So I am pretty pleased that I managed to finish off nine products. It seems to be about 10 to a dozen seems to be like my monthly average so nine products is really good. I have them out here in front of me so I'm going to get started and talk through what they are. Now I do have my two project pan videos coming up very soon, I think they're probably going to be my next couple of videos that I upload, so I will talk about those particular products again in those videos, so if you watch them I will probably end up repeating myself, but I do have four products here that I have used up that are part of my beauty project pan, so I have two project pans, one is focused purely on makeup, and the other one I include any other type of beauty product that isn't makeup and I have four products here from that project pan series so I'm going to talk about those ones that I've finished off I have two hair care products the first one is the Superdrug coconut water and coconut oil hair mask and I'm pretty inconsistent with sort of hair masks. I'm trying to get into a better routine of looking after my hair. So I did say to myself, if I use this product once a week, I should be able to get through it fairly quickly. But as you can see, I don't have a lot of length to my hair. My hair basically comes down to my collarbone. So I was quite limited with how much I could use. But I did end up using this product up. It is a very nice hair mask. It does make your hair feel really soft and really smooth. But because this is a very cheap product, I'm not sure whether it's just coating the hair and, and making it feel that way because of the coating or whether it is actually getting into the hair, I, I don't know, I'm not really clued up on hair, and actually making it softer and smoother. But for a really good price point, I really liked it. Smells lovely as well. I really don't like coconut to eat. I think it's horrible. But in products, it smells really, really lovely. So it also makes your hair smell nice. So a product that I possibly would repurchase, but I have purchased a new hair mask, which is a Way one, which is considerably more expensive than this one. So I do want to spend a little bit more money on hair care products and try, I suppose, better hair care brands and see how they compare to the cheaper one. If I basically get the same results with the Way one, then I might come back to this one. But if you have a small budget and you want a hair mask, this one from Superdrug is a good option to go for. The other hair care product is the Charles Worthington Thicker and Fuller Scalp Tonic, a product that I've had for a long time. I have a lot of hair care styling products, you can probably see them all up here, and I want to work my way through them this year, which is why I've kind of created the other project pan project that I'm doing. And this was one product that I'd had for quite some time, and I was just really inconsistent with how I applied it. And with this product, you section your hair with the nozzle. So you make about four or five sections along your hairline, squeeze the product along the parting that you've made and then massage it in. And it's meant to give the appearance of thicker and fuller hair. Now, as you can see, my hair is very flat. I have thin, thin to medium, but fine hair. So it's very difficult for me to get any volume and any body in my hair. My hair is just naturally quite kind of like sleek and straight which I know some people do like, but when that is your hair naturally, you do sometimes want to mix it up and get a little bit of volume. And I have previously owned this and I was able to see results. Some people did comment and say, oh, your hair looks thicker. So I repurchased it, to, but to be honest, I haven't seen those resu results for a long time. So I'm not sure whether the product just stopped working for me or whether this product actually ended up expiring and then just didn't work. So a bit of a disappointing one, this one, because I have had good results with it before, but because I haven't seen those results in a long time, it's not a product I would repurchase. And I'm glad that I have used that one up and I can start working on other hair care products 
in my collection. The other two products that I finished up in my beauty project pan, so there's four in total. The other two are skincare products and the next one is the Ordinary Argyra Line Solution 10%. And this is meant to be like Botox in a bottle. So anywhere where you've got some lines, anywhere that you feel your face needs plumping up a little bit, you apply this. So it's a squeezy pipette and I would drop about sort of three to four pumps in the palm of my hand, take my ring and middle finger, swirl it around and then I would push it in between my eyebrows and then also on my smile lines. But I don't think this really works. I didn't really see a difference in a sort of like faint line that I have here. I feel like it didn't really plump my skin up. So I think I would rather rely on really hydrating products rather than products like this in the future. So maybe look at really hydrating serums, maybe try and up my hyaluronic acid in my skincare ingredients that I'm using. So I wouldn't rate this one. I don't think it does a particularly good job not one that I would repurchase and I think this is actually my second bottle so it is one that I have tried a lot of times recently and I have been using this on a really regular basis I've been using it like twice a day so I have been using it consistently enough to know that it just doesn't work for me but price wise it is really good I can't remember how much it costs because I bought it a while ago but I'm guessing around about sort of the £10 mark maybe so if you did want to try it you're not going to break the bank by giving it a go but it's not really one that I would try again. Didn't really see any results with it. Next product is another one that's kind of been in my collection for a long time and it's the Tan Lux Facial Tanning Drops. I think this is really good. You add three, four drops, well that's how many I added, but I think you can add up to about 12 drops. But I added about three to four drops in with my moisturiser and I would use that of an evening. So I wouldn't really add this to my morning moisturiser. So I put this in my evening moisturiser, woke up and my skin had not really a tan, but my face just wasn't as pasty as it was the night before. I felt like it blended in really well. There wasn't any telltale sort of like lines around my face or any patchiness, any areas that were a lot darker than others. I did notice though that it did sometimes stain my hands, even though I did wash my hands immediately after applying it. I would sometimes get like orange marks in between like my fingers, even though I was very thorough washing my hands, so a bit annoying. But I think it gives a really nice tanned appearance like a nice glow a nice bit of color to your skin so a product that i really liked and i would repurchase but a product that i am really lazy and inconsistent about applying i notice that i'm really pale and i use it for maybe one or two weeks and then i put it back on my shelf on my dressing table and i don't touch it for months so that's really why i included it in the project pan because i wanted to get it used up but i liked it and i would repurchase it and i would recommend it but probably not for a while I am interested in trying like a facial tanning mist. I think saint Pay do one, so I am intrigued to try that one. But if you would prefer something to mix into your moisturiser, I would recommend this one. Very good product. Okay, another project pan product that I used up, but this is from my makeup project pan. And it's one that I'm very, very happy I've used up because it's been in my project pan for ages. And it's my number seven custom blend highlighting drops. It's a liquid highlighter. It is 15 mils and it has a little squeezy nozzle. So you squeeze a little bit out onto your finger or the end of a beauty blender and you just sort of pat it in to your cheekbones or anywhere you want to highlight. But because it's liquid and because you don't need a lot of it, it takes ages to use it up. I can't remember how long in total it's been in my project pan, but it's been in my project pan for months and I was hoping to have used it up by the end of last year. And although I have used it up, I've only managed to use it up by adding it to body moisturisers. So I did take this one on holiday with me and I mixed it in with my body moisturiser. And for about five days, I think it was, I used that in body moisturiser that I applied to my whole body. So I was thinking, oh, I'll just apply it to my collarbone or just my shoulders and that'll be enough to get it used up. No, you get so much product in this that if I hadn't have used it in a head to toe body moisturizer for about five days in a row, this would probably have stayed in my project pan for the next at least three months, probably. So one that I am really pleased that I've used up. I like it, it's a very, very pretty product, but I'm not a massive highlighter fan. It is a little bit glittery and I just want to get through other highlighters in my collection. I have quite a few in some other palettes that I just want to get used up. And because this had been in my project pan for quite some time, I just got a bit fed up of it. But it's fine. It's done. It's used up. It's very nice, though. I would recommend it. But probably wouldn't repurchase it because I would prefer to try other liquid highlighters that aren't glittery. That's 
a bit more of like a, a dew, a luminosity rather than like a glittery highlighter. But a nice enough product, but glad I've used it up. Okay, and the remaining four products are non-project pan related products. So let's start with this one, which is my Inky List Retinol Eye Cream. I always cut open squeezy tubes like this and scrape out all the product. So with retinol eye cream, it's meant to reduce visible signs of aging around your eyes and also help sort of like target dark circles. Didn't really do any of that. It was a hydrating enough eye cream. It was nice enough. But I think I've kind of given up on eye creams now that claim to tackle dark circles and stuff like that. I don't think they do. I think they just provide a bit of hydration and is just a nice addition to my skincare routine. Being in my 30s and wearing glasses, I think that puts me as like a good candidate to wear eye cream on a regular basis. It's one I would repurchase, but I don't think I've ever really used an eye cream and gone, wow, that's amazing. I love it. Amazing results. I felt amazing would definitely repurchase it. But then I've also not come across an eye cream where I've gone, I've hated it, it was awful, it didn't really do anything for me. I find eye creams very much a meh product, but it is a product I will continue to use. So yeah, I would repurchase this one, but similarly, I would also try other ones. Next skincare product is from La Roche-Posay, and this is the Tellurian Sensitive Fluid sensitive day cream and this one is 40 mils so just slightly below the 50 mils standard size that you would get for a day cream this one is really nice i wanted to get a sensitive day cream because i find that my skin is just a little bit more sensitized now than it ever really used to be so i wanted something simple no frills fragrance free just something that's gonna hopefully keep my skin quite calm during the winter months here in the uk and this one did the job really well I don't think it's the most super hydrating of day creams, especially for this time of year. So I would repurchase this one, but I would probably wait until sort of the summer months where hopefully my skin isn't as thirsty as it is now. But it is nice enough. Really enjoyed using it. It's got a really simple pump action. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I really love a pump with skincare. It just makes things so much easier. So yes, one that I would recommend. Enjoyed using it but probably more of a summer product than a winter one. And then the next two products are both bath body care type of products. The first one is the Sanctuary Body Scrub 50 mils, and this one I bought when I placed an online order from somewhere, I can't remember where, but I needed to spend like an extra couple of quid to get the free delivery. So I thought, well, let's back on something like this, a product that I'm gonna use that I probably kind of need to use, but one that I don't spend a load of money on. This one is nice enough. I think I probably used this up in two applications though. That's the thing with the body scrub because obviously you're applying it to your entire body. You're gonna get through the product really, really quickly. So I don't like to spend loads of money on a body scrub. But Sanctuary is a nice brand, fairly good price point. So for that reason, I would buy it again. And this is a nice texture as well. Sometimes with body scrubs, they can be either too abrasive where it feels like you're peeling off a layer of skin or they're not abrasive enough they're more a body gel with a couple bits of scrub in this is a really nice happy medium really really liked this one doesn't quite take the place of the soap and glory tubs of body scrub that i really really like and those you can quite often find for like three for two at boots but this one is good though and i would repurchase it a nice product to use okay and last product is from lush and it's a 100 gram bottle of rose jam shower gel i really love rose as a scent i know it's a real hit and miss scent because sometimes people think it's a little bit old woman like it's a little bit heady and stuffy and just not very nice but a really lovely pure rose scent oh, i just love i think it's so lovely this smells nice but it's not the best rose scent that i've ever smelled i feel like it's more of a modern take on rose so you can smell the rose in it but it's not a pure rose scent so maybe if you're not the biggest fan of rose then this is probably a shower gel you might want to try but for somebody like me who is a big fan of rose there's better rose scented products out there but Lush do some really lovely shower gels they lather up really well they're quite kind of thick in texture and I'm not a massive fan of the bottles the bottles are quite kind of hard to get your product out I think after the first couple of applications I have to turn the bottle upside down and give it a really good shake to get product out. So I'm not a massive fan of the packaging, 
but I do like that they are recyclable and sustainable and very much that type of product. But the product itself, I liked and I would repurchase it, but if I was after, like I say, a pure rose scent, this isn't one that I would go for. I would go for something else. So another product that I have used up, I feel like I have a lot of products still at the moment. I feel like there's a lot going on here. There's a lot in my bathing cabinets. So yeah, I feel like there's still a lot of products in my collection that I kind of need to work through and get used up. So those are my empties for the month of February. So nine empties, very happy with that number. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have tried any of the products that I've mentioned here. What are your thoughts on them as well? Thank you so much for watching the video guys and I will see you again soon for my next one.